are back in the Alamo City for the game that has garnered most of the attention all week long. The Yukon Huskies and the Duke Blue Devils about the tangle. As already, Georgia Tech has advanced to Monday night's championship game with a two-point nail-biter over Oklahoma State. We will be back inside where things are still pulsating here as we get set for UConn to do. And again, hello, friends. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. I mean, think we got one more like we saw in the first one here Absolutely. Tonight. They started the season 1-2. They both have been number one in the nation through the course of this season. At a, at a certain time, I expect a great ball game here. Hey, we've got great players to talk about, including Emeka Okafer, the man in the middle for UConn. This man is such a force, particularly on the defensive end. It's going to be important to see how healthy he is at the start of this ball game because he can lead a team in so many ways. Ben Gordon, been the leading scorer in the NCAA tournament so far. Great perimeter jump shot, great penetrator on the inside. And with Okafor out, he has stepped up to prove what a great All-American player he is. How about the freshman being a factor here? Talking about Villanueva. Villanueva is an outstanding freshman, and we know what happened last year in this tournament. A freshman led Syracuse to a national championship. He certainly has those qualities. Well, Duke's got leadership qualities when you talk about Chris Duhon. Never had a player that's been the most outstanding player in this tournament strictly on defense. He could be the first to be able to lead Duke all the way. You think this is a real key part of this game tonight for Duke? Talking about Sheldon Williams. Without question, they cannot win unless Sheldon Williams stays out of foul trouble and can be productive offensively. Talk about the freshman on the Duke side here, Billy Luol Dang tonight. Can, can you imagine a year ago these two guys were teammates on the same high school team? Dang is a tough matchup for anybody, and he can come out very big in a game like this one. Well, they started the season ranked number one and two in the nation. It is Connecticut and Duke coming up in a moment. The Connecticut and Duke, the only two teams that were ranked in the top ten all season long. About to meet for the right to play Georgia Tech Monday night. And let's get an update over now from Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Jim, obviously injuries affecting pivotal players on each team. I just spoke with Connecticut's Emeka Okafor. He told me there are no ill effects from that shoulder stinger he suffered. He went through shoot around today with no problem. As for Duke's Chris Duhon, the ribs, yes, still bothering him, but he's gradually taking more and more reps this week. He'll wear a pad over those ribs for protection. He said where it's really going to trouble him is trying to fight through screens, but he said, hey, this is my team. It's my last year, and I'm going to take them as far as I can go. All right, Bonnie, these two met, of course, five years ago for the national championship with UConn prevailing. We'll get it started in a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Troy. Singular Wireless. Coca-Cola. And by Pontiac. We return to the Alamo Dome, and it's time for the Pontiac starting lineups. Here's Gene Honda. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, for tonight's second national semifinal matchup between the champions of the Phoenix Regional, the Connecticut Huskies, and the champions of the Atlanta Regional, the Duke Blue Devils. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'5 sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, number 31, Rashad Anderson. At forward for Duke, a 6'9 sophomore from Forest Park, Oklahoma, number 23, Sheldon Williams. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'10 freshman from Mount Airy, Maryland, Number 21, Josh Boone. At forward for Duke, a 6'8 freshman from London, England. Number two, Luol Deng. At center for Connecticut, a 6'10 junior from Houston, Texas. Number 50, Emeka Okafor. At guard for Duke, a 6'1 senior from Slidell, Louisiana, number 21, Chris Duhon. 
At guard for Connecticut, a 6'1", senior from the Queens, New York, number 12, Talit Brown. At guard for Duke, a 6'3", junior from Missouri City, Texas, number 5, Daniel Ewing. At guard for Connecticut, a 6'3", junior from Mount Vernon, New York, number 4, Ben Gordon. At guard for Duke, a 6'4", sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia, number 4, J.J. Reddick. Assisting the Huskies tonight are Tom Moore, George Blaney, and Clyde Vaughn. The head coach for Connecticut is Jim Calhoun. Assisting the Blue Devils tonight are Johnny Dawkins, Steve Wojciechowski, and Chris Collins. And the head coach for Duke is Mike Krzyzewski. Coach K in the Hall of Fame three years ago. Jim Calhoun could find himself in the hall come Monday when they announce the 04 class. Billy, here are your points for this one. Well, the Husky Fly Swatters, the number one shot blocking team in the country. They really cause you problems when you get inside trying to score against this team of great shot blockers. Flash Gordon, the number one scorer in this tournament so far at 22 a game has been Ben Gordon. And before that, he set a record in the Big East tournament as well. He's played great basketball. Blue Devil answer. They have to come up big with Sheldon Williams. He has to stay on the floor and he has to be productive. The showstopper. No one has played any better defense against better people than Chris Duhon has in this tournament. Sato and Chalmers from Xavier found that out last week. Today's game is brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television. David Hall, Orlando's Poole, Ted Hillary, and their season's validated. They're the officials for this second semifinal. Now, Jim, the last time we saw these two in a Final Four situation, it was for the big championship. And at that night, if you remember correctly, everybody thought that Duke was a heavy favorite. Came into that game, number one in the country. And it didn't work out that way. It was a dazzling game. Three-point final for UConn. And the Huskies in the dark uniforms as a two-seed. Duke a one. Duke gets to wear the home whites. And right away, you can see Duhon on Brown, not on Gordon. Right into Okafor, back to the rim. And it's Boone pulling it back out for a second try. Good, strong rebound over Dang. So Duhon's going to be on ground to start the game. Believe me, he'll be on Gordon before this game's over. That one is knocked away by Sheldon Williams. Ewing with a pull up three and out to Reddick quickly to Duhon. A lot of snap on this floor at the start. Uh, we're talking about teams that have a lot of talent. Solid screen looking for the lob, nothing there. Ewing, that one is intercepted by Anderson. Brown to Duhon back. In and out, boom, put back, and again, Sheldon Williams with a hand on it, but to look Brown with the trees inside, scores. Well, remember in the last game that we talked about, it was Ricky Moore, a guy who wasn't expected to score much, who came out hot in that first half to set up Connecticut in great shape. Williams backing in Okafer, gets the shot, heavily influenced by that great shot blocker, and Williams fouls right back after the miss. Well, exactly what Connecticut could want. Here we see Talik Brown going on the inside. He's so strong, doesn't mind finishing. And there's Boone with his second big play in this game. Williams thinks he has it, but Talik Brown gets it right back. And Jim, exactly what Duke didn't want to have happen. Okafer stops Williams' shot, then Williams picks up the over-the-back foul. Boy, Okafer, you can tell he's in much better shape. Posting up strong on Williams down inside. Doesn't look like that back's giving him any trouble at all. He's had that back issue, and then that stinger that he suffered last week in the regional final win over Alabama. Gordon, three-point shot, and the first five to the Huskies. Good rub off by Gordon inside. Boone doing an excellent job so far in this ballgame. Setting screens, he got the opening tap and has been on the boards.
You know, indecision here by Duke to get the play started. And Reddick flips it over. Ewing with Anderson. Manning him. Ewing gets pinned, corner, dang, three. No. And what a ball. Oh, oh, oh man. Arms it. Up to Reddick. There's a hole by Brown gets by with it. Good defensive adjustment that time by Connecticut. Brown got by with a hold. Could have been an intentional foul. I thought Reddick had just having his arms up as he was going back and had no idea where the ball was. But you can see Connecticut wants to push this ball up the floor. And Duhon will be shooting free throws. Both of these teams, Billy, interesting. Their, their brackets were pretty busted up, uh, and as a result, they didn't really have to play high seeds to get here. Look at, uh, here's the case for the Yukon Huskies. Well, a 15, a 7, a 6, and an 8. A lot different than what we saw in the first game with what Oklahoma State had to do. Talking about not having to play a top 20 team to make it to San Antonio. Well, we have seen national champions get that way. Remember Kansas back in 88. It seemed like every time they had to play a tough team, they get knocked off the game before. Duhon gets Duke's first point. A starter. In the championship game 2001 in Minneapolis as a freshman. Oh, Jay got by with a push off that time on Boone. <laughs> Duhan not looking for the open jumper. Boone gets a hand on the shot of things. It was that matchup we talked about. Okafer did a good job. Williams back it in Okafer. He finally puts it up. Second try. No. And that ball. Hold on. That's going to be a foul, I believe, yeah. on Okafer. Okafer on a push from the back. You can see what Okafer is doing to Williams. And Williams standing up to the challenge pretty good. But Okafer such a great shot blocker. Williams giving him a lot of respect. And in this particular case, puts it up so quickly, misses the chippy. And there's the little foul over the back. Duke's missed his first six shots. And there again, Dang giving respect to Okafor's shot blocking ability. Duhan, he loves that shot. He's very good at the floater. You've got to give him the jump shot, stop his penetration. Puts it up there soft on the yes, rim. he does. And watch Gordon come out from these screens and square up on that jumper. Pull up jumper and five points already for Gordon. 7-3 Huskies. And Mike Krzyzewski may have to make a move earlier than he anticipated, and that is to put Duhon on Gordon if Gordon's going to get off this way. His Reddick gives it up. Dang. Well, again, respecting Okafor, Okafor so much. There's another foul on him, however. Is that going to be a Mecca? It is. Wow, that's the story here in the first four minutes. Two on a Mecca Okafor. And Jim Calhoun very upset over there. He probably is going to have to make a change early. And this is what we talked about. The key to this game, Williams and Okafor. Okafor can't believe it's his foul. Boy, he he's going to have to sit. He better be careful. He is just furious at this call. And there you see the body contact that he made. Legitimate foul. But Okafor is going to have to sit down. And they're going to have to bring in Villanueva. Now Just, that means you're going to have Jim on the floor in a Final Four game. Your two big guys are freshmen. Talking about Boone and Villanueva on the UConn side. But they learn how to play with this lineup during the Big East tournament when Okafor, look at the anger, the disappointment, despair. He'll sit with the two. And these uh, two combined, talking about Villanueva and Boone, to carry the Huskies into the Big East final without Okafor. Then they beat Pitt in the final with him. Here's Duhon coming out. They've got to watch Reddick for the jump shot. It's Ewing. In and out. And Anderson collapses in on it. I thought that Duhon had kicked that ball, ball out to Reddick for the jump shot. Good fast break opportunity. Duke has had a number go in and out, up tight. That time Ewing beat Gordon to the spot. Bad That's Anderson, shot. and he'll shoot three. Bad shot and a bad defensive play by Riddick. Why would you follow a guy that's shooting a gliding three-pointer? Riddick with the hack, and again, shooting a three. And I talked about UConn in his bracket. Look at Duke, the highest-seeded team it had to beat. 
Illinois in the Sweet 16. I will say something about those last two teams they played, however, Illinois and Xavier. Jim, we saw Illinois play very poorly in the Big Ten tournament, but then they really turned it on, and nobody played any better than Xavier did winning all four games in the Atlantic 10 and then marching through until that final of the regional against Duke. What a good looking team coach that Matt up put together. I saw Sean Miller one of his assistants out here at the final four and that team. I mean it looked like a final four team by the end of the tournament. We're talking about Miles and Sato and Chalmers. Well, remember, they were in great shape. Miles with 16 points, 10 rebounds, 12 minutes to go, and picked up those two fouls that put him out of the game, just as we see Okafor sitting over in the sidelines right now, very unhappy with his position. Anderson, who is a great shooter, particularly from the perimeter, has big uh, made a big lift since he's been in the starting lineup for Connecticut. All right, the six-point lead for... UConn, Duke's largest deficit of the tournament. One thing about Duke and Coach K, Billy, one win away from tying Dean Smith for the most wins in the NCAA tournament in history. That's some pretty big company right there. Ooh. John Wooden, you got to remember now, when John Wooden coached, they only played four games right. to be the national champion. So. You have to remember that, but uh, certainly not taking anything away from what Mike Krzyzewski has done in this era. Duhan free for the three. Not the shot that he would like to take, but uh, you can see well scouted it. Connecticut has it. They're going to give him that shot. He can make that shot. Three-point shot by the freshman. Yes, sir. He can make that shot. Changes entire philosophy as to how Connecticut plays. A nice nine-point margin right now for Connecticut with Okafor sitting down. And they got another big guy on the floor, number 11, Hilton Armstrong, as Reddick fires back. Bouncing around, chased down Sean Dockery on the floor for the Blue Devils recovers. And Williams open inside, didn't get it to him in time. Duke is one of 11 from the field to start this game. See, they're going to give Dockery the shot as well. Long. Yep, what you have right now is Connecticut has done a beautiful scouting job on Duke. They're playing Reddick and making him shoot the ball, not making him put the ball on the floor. The other guys are giving up the shot on the outside. Ewing didn't hit that first one. That would have changed the complexion of things. This is precisely how the tournament has gone thus far for the Huskies. They have not been threatened in this tournament, getting out the big leads, including that huge lead at Phoenix. Villanueva, too strong, had put it up with the left hand, and then his old roommate in high school comes out with it. Dang. Again, see the ball comes out. Dockery's not going to take that shot. Look at Reddick from 25. Not a good shot. When you're down like this, you've got to get better looks. Look at Villanueva. Krzyzewski's going to go bigger. He's going to that bench. Ewing back in. He realized he's got to get some points. Connecticut, I really love the way that they have decided to play this team. That's a push. I'm strong on the inside. Great hands by Villanueva. And an excellent pass. You saw him step outside, make the three-point shot, and then get on the break. Dang and Reddick both go out. Reddick's got to calm down a little bit, taking shots much too quick. Boy, he has some soft touch. Talking about 6'11", Villanueva. Hilton Armstrong is hit with that foul. But Connecticut can handle that. He's in the game for minutes and to commit some fouls. And Armstrong rejects. And another one. Randolph puts back and one. Armstrong commits his second. Now that is what Shavlik Randolph could not do last year. He had all kinds of medical problems with those hips. He could never finish strong. He does it here. Terrific job, though. You can see Armstrong just giving up his body. Here's the shot. Now watch him go up, gives up his body, and still makes the shot. And that breaks an 8 nothing Husky run. Chad Randolph. Heralded North Carolina schoolboy athlete, two time state player of the year. Broke all of Pistol Pete Maravich's scoring records at Pistol Pete's high school. Ali Brown had a 50 point game. Here's a steal. What's Ewing going to do with it? Khalid Brown's pretty good against these. Villanueva 
with the rejection, but Randolph again in the right spot. Gordon does the wise thing, settles this team down a little bit. And boy, it's nice to have the ball in the hands of a senior guard. All-time assist man in UConn history. This time commits the turnover. Thursday when the crime scene is a construction site. And the murder weapon is a hammer. How will CSI track down the killer? It's America's most watched drama, CSI, Thursday at 9. 8 Central on America's most watched network. Hey, Jim, Denham Brown comes in for the first time. In the last 10 games, he's only had 39 points. We're talking about the first 10 guy games. This guy had 158 points. Which player will he be tonight? Ewing down and out, and Boone sweeps. We've got Ding back on the floor for Duke. Great crossover dribble and recovery. Gordon, too strong that time, but Boone's in the right place and almost had a three-point opportunity. This freshman is uh, really the one above all who stepped out, stepped up when Okafor was out for the Big East quarters and semifinals. Well, that probably should have happened, Jim, because you remember before this season started, Jim Calhoun likes to ask his fellows, who do you think should be in the starting lineup? And Okafor stepped forward, and I said, he said, Josh Boone belongs in that starting lineup, but he's never been out of it. So, now Boone had... 16 rebounds in one Big East tournament game, which was the tournament record for a freshman. Think of all the players that came oh, through in, in that tournament through the years. And they had 15 in the semis. Already got four here in this one. A little short. And that's over. That's last touch by Villanueva. And Duke has not gotten in any semblance of, of a half-court offense so far. Everything's been kind of one and one. Team's been scattered. But a lot of that should be uh, because of Connecticut's defense. They've given up jump shots to the non shooters and taken the jump shots away from others. Too high. Look at that snatch by Villanueva. Talik pushing it up, bounces it in. Boone wasn't ready. Well, you couldn't ask Brown to do much more. That was a perfect pass. Boone should have been able to catch that and put it away. Anderson's checking in. You got to just knowing him. He's such a, a gunslinger. He's ready to knock down a three. He made six in the first half in the last game. Now you have four very good shooters on the floor for Connecticut and Boone in the middle. That means Gordon will play the point guard position. Dang with a three. Got it. That first three of the night for Duke. They missed their first five. Now, let's see how they try to match up with this team. They're going to wave it bouncing around. We'll pull up, take the jumper. All Duke underneath. Dockery comes busting out. Mike Krzyzewski right now just down five, having a chance to keep Williams on that bench so he doesn't pick up any more fouls. Duhon off the glass. Beautiful move. He loves that slashing layup. A 9-1 stretch here for the Devils who wore down 11. That's a traveling call. Right now, without their point guard in the game, Connecticut having problems. Ben Gordon's going to have to handle that ball more. 16-13, Connecticut. Mike Krzyzewski took Duke to the final for the first time back in 1986. Lost to Louisville, but one month after that, UConn hired this man in May of 86, Jim Calhoun, and he might be a Hall of Famer, Billy, on Monday. Boy, what a doubleheader that would be. Could you imagine a man being inducted into the Hall of Fame or announced to the Hall of Fame and winning a national championship on the same day? Who's, who's, ever, ever, who's, ever, had a, oh, who's ever had a better day than that in the no. history of college basketball? That happens. Well, a hold on the inside on Brown, who was brought back into the game to settle things down for Jim Calhoun. Jim, there are so many interesting things about teams in the in the NCAA tournament. Imagine this. Connecticut, with 34 wins all time in the NCAA tournament, has never beaten the same team twice. Is that, is that mind-boggling? I'm trying to do it right here. Look at that. 
Now, will Jim Calhoun come back with Okafer, or is he going to say, no, as long as we can stay in this ball game, I'm saving him for the second half. And remember, Mike Krzyzewski doing likewise. To Lake, to Boone, and they say Duke touched it. Get instant information updated, live scoring, shooting percentages, rebounds. You can find it all at CBSSportsLine.com. What's your hunch about that, Billy? Uh, I think that it'll, I think as long as they stay in this game, he keeps Okafer on the sidelines. And Mike Krzyzewski is going to do the same thing as Williams if he can keep the game close. He doesn't want him in any foul trouble. I think Ben Gordon's got to get a lot more touches now. Here he comes. Duke playing packed way back inside right now. Anderson, here we go, three-pointer. Oh, he was hitting them last week and has the three free throws at this point in this game. That was a good move by Reddick, not to challenge Brown with his dribble. Brown, a much better defender than Reddick is a dribbler. Duke has a chance to take the lead after trailing by 11. Randolph with Armstrong nice. behind him. By Chablet Randolph for Duke's first lead of the night. Beautiful inside post move that time by Chablet Randolph. Gordon, beautiful step to the basket. Back of the rim looked like it was between Bank and Swish. And Gordon is down, so they've got the numbers. Has Duke. Ewing, give on Randolph. Huge start to the game Time for Chablet Randolph. Timeout Calhoun. He does not like what he's seeing out there right now. And he hates to look at Okafer on that bench. Duke on a run here, 15 to 1. Do you remember how dejected Omeka Okafer was when he went out with two fouls? Look at him now as Chef Randolph. Chef Randolph just controlling things inside. He's hit all four of his shots. Pulled well, down three rebounds. And Williams back in the game. Randolph uh, gets a good, well deserved rest. Williams with one foul on him. And again, it's a 15 to 1 stretch. Back to Boone, lost the handle going up. Tip, no, nope. Boone again, yes. The two freshmen played volleyball with Duke right that time. Villanueva had one also just come out. First basket in over four minutes for the Huskies. Dang, Williams has position. One more try, lost it going up. They'll say a reach in foul on the Huskies. Williams so powerful with that upper body strength. Now we'll see the tip, and he lost it, Jim. And Boone has had a problem. There you see Bill in the wave. His tap didn't go. Boone stays right with it and puts it in. Freshman, freshman, freshman. <laughs> Basket. Basket. Right. And that foul was on Rashad Anderson. Seventh team foul, just the first on Anderson. Up to the point that Williams came back in the ball game, he and Okafer, out of 20 minutes, had only played 11. So you can see Jim Calhoun sitting over there and saying, as long as we stay in this ball game, Okafer is going to sit right down on that bench. He does not want him to pick up his third. Former two-time Oklahoma player of the year, grew up less than an hour away from Stillwater. And uh, he's a Duke man now, Sheldon Williams, the one of two right there. And you see they're saving Duhon for having Ewing play Gordon this entire first half. Except on a switch, and there's Duhon on Gordon. Nice pump fake. Wild shot. shot, though, and it comes out to Reddick. He sees the advantage. He's got Duhon, the trailer, ding, and goodbye. And another timeout. Whoa. Calhoun points right at Rashad Anderson. He is furious at that defensive effort. Wow, I've never seen him get a guy's face Whoa. like that. Georgia Tech on Monday night will play for the school's first ever national championship in basketball. Never been in the final before, and here Duke is trying to make it an all-ACC final with a 22-18 lead. How about that Calhoun reaction? Oh, he was hot because Anderson made no attempt whatsoever to draw the charge. He just did kind of a, threw a blankie out there, let him go ahead right in for the layup. Gordon rattles out, Villanueva keeps it active. And that's going against Ewing. You all dang showing the jump shot from the outside. We know he can catch the ball in the break. There's a good finish on the inside. And there's the play that Jim Calhoun was so hot about. He came right out almost to the foul line, Jim, to get in Anderson's face. 
Villanueva will shoot two. That was the first on Ewing. And remember when this team played Connecticut for the start of the year, Okafor was slightly injured, certainly not up to par, and Villanueva did not play, did not play in the first six games this year. Back at the start of the year when Georgia Tech yep. played Georgia Tech in the semis of the NIT. And Georgia Tech beat UConn by 16. That's Ewing floating and spinning out. Boy, they've had some really unusual misses. Look like they're in. Trailer, boom, no foul, and Ewing clears. And now Duke's got the numbers, and you got to look for Reddick right now. You got to keep an eye on him. Well, Williams is left alone. Easy shot. There's Will Bell in the way, but does not have the strength to stay with him. Boone much better able to stay with Williams down in that low post. Reach around. That's the second on Sheldon Williams. And Jim, most big guys that get into foul trouble get into foul trouble on foolish reach fouls, and that was Williams. He'll be down the rest of the half. Remember, this was 15 4 UConn at one time. Duke's up five. Jim Nance with Billy Packer and Bonnie Bernstein in San Antonio. And Duke's on a 20 to 4 run. You know, Billy, the Big East in the national semifinals all time, 7 and 0 against non conference opposition. When they played another Big East team like Providence and Syracuse, St. John's, St. John's and St. John's, they've yep. beaten each other 7 and 0, but UConn is down here right now. Duke zone on the out of bounds situation. Boone, look at his passing. Brown, Boone keeps it alive, and boy, he's active. He sure is active on the inside. He's done everything right in this game so far, except he's had some tough catches on the inside that he wasn't able to execute. But Jim Calhoun, the story of this half has been Okafor sitting on that bench after only three minutes of play. And of course, Sheldon Williams down now, Billy, with a two as well. We probably will see both of those fellas spending the remainder of the half on the bench. Duhon with the floater. The shot you told us he loves. He loves to shoot that floating, running one-hander. You've got to make him take jump shots. Villanueva. Not that a good was shot. A wild shot. And it's Randolph. Another push-up looking for Reddick. Reddick hasn't made one from the floor yet. And there's cutting to the basket. Have Randolph back to the line for two. Great unselfish play by Duke there. Dang, making the extra hit inside. Terrific play. Randolph goes in. Villanueva fouls him or else he puts that away, so it was probably a pretty good foul. Villanueva's first. We're talking about how Randolph last year battled injuries and was misdiagnosed. Really missed the last six games. Did not play in the NCAA tournament. Thought it was a foot injury, ends up it was a hip injury. He was trying to compensate. He sawed off a tennis ball in half, stuck it inside a sneaker, trying to compensate all kinds of maneuvers to try to stay on the floor. But just now here, down the second half stretch of this season, are we seeing the player that everybody had talked about coming out of high school? I would agree, uh, Jim. His first game, he started and had 23 points and seven rebounds against Army, but he was never what was expected of him and you got to go ahead and say that that injury had an awful lot to do with it the young man was in a lot of pain and never could get in the condition that he's in now Ewing second Dockery will come in for Ewing he'll go out with the two and right now with seven minutes to go if you're Duke think about Reddick to try to get him going from the outside with the three. If you're Connecticut, get that ball inside. Let Talik Brown make some handoffs. Oh. Taken away by Dockery. Seems like every time Talik Brown does not make the offense move, there's a turnover. Duhon Good almost strength. stolen by Gordon. Dockery plants the feet, puts the three up, and boom with the release to, to Leek Brown. Gordon on the way in, and that's a block foul on Duke, on Randolph. So difficult to stop Gordon with that great elevation on the inside. Monday on The Late Show, you can catch Jessica Simpson, Nick Lachey, and later in the week, Dave's all-new 
with Jimmy Fallon, Usher, and Bruce Willis right here on America's Most Watched Network. That's now second foul on Randolph. Three Duke players with two fouls. Randolph, Ewing, and Williams. Gordon with that great stretch. 81 points in the Big East tournament. Set an all-time record. Leading the team to the championship there in that great game against Pitt in the final. And now the leading scorer so far in the NCAA tournament as well. Great run. Denim Brown back in for the Huskies. Not only the leading scorer in the tournament, but also with that one game standout 36 point effort against Alabama last Saturday. Well, they say that that's what Jim Gallon said the best half that Connecticut has played this entire season. And a lot of it was because of Gordon's tremendous play. Reddick. Over the back, and that could be number three on Shadlick Randolph. It is. I don't know why Reddick is wanting to drive the ball down in there, to be quite honest with you. I realize Okafor's out of the ball game, but he's got to get on track from the outside with his jump shot. Sheldon Williams is returning, Billy, because of the three fouls for Randolph, and he knew it right away that that was a big one. You know, with 6.14 to go, I think this is a risky move. What would you rather have, Randolph with three or Williams with three? I think you'd like to go in the second half, if anything, make sure that Williams only has two. Uh oh, it looks like Duhan with all the problems he's ha had with his ribs and never did come out of a game. Now, with a little scratch on his elbow, he's going to have to get it looked at. And Ted Hillary brings him over. You see a little blood on the uniform, but the situation is arrested. So we'll put Hilton Armstrong at the line. You can break my ribs and I'm not coming out. You get a little blood, you're going to take me out of the game. Long. Off with three, so Williams on the floor. Let's see what happens. Looking for another big body. They got Nick Horvath. Hasn't seen action. Oh, underneath, that's Stockery. You saw that play set up. Dang had his eye on him the whole time. And Brown lost it for a moment. Talik Brown. Beautiful shot. Young man who is among those three great guards to come out of New York. Barrett, Cook, and Talik Brown. One of them got to a final four. We saw Andre Barrett, or Duke saw Andre Barrett early in this tournament, and there's the near steal. Yes, oh, dang. Directs a little traffic. Redick, he wanted to go to the basket. It's taken away. Behind the back, how about that? Bouncing it in, Armstrong. Pinned underneath, and it's ready. Not good plays by Duke. Boy, Helter Skelter action traveling. And there's a case where Reddick is just go ahead, pull the ball out to the side, get the ball back to a ball handler, and then get a kick out for a jump shot. Reddick not making good decisions at all out here. Armstrong out and going the way that returns. Duke with numerous opportunities here, Jim, to extend this lead, not taking advantage of it at all. I think you have to be careful when you got a guy like Williams with foul trouble. You don't want him catching the ball on the break, running into somebody. Both teams shooting under 40 percent. Five minutes to go in the half. Eight baskets, eight turnovers committed by the Huskies. Brown, that's going to be a charge. Dang, doing a good job that time. Talik trying to get on the inside. Jim, you're talking about both of these teams shooting poorly. They're both teams that shoot 48% and 47%, so very much out of character. What are they going to do with Talik Brown? That was his second. They're going to take him out of the ball game <laughs> and let Ben Gordon be the point guard. Dang, yes. You Again, think, right <laughs> over his old roommate. You think that those two ran that play before? Now, Talik Brown has to be very careful now because he's got a sub coming in for him. He doesn't want to pick up that third on a charge. How about Duhon? It's like a blanket, isn't he? Well, Gordon had five quick points in this game, but things were settled down for him. Underneath, and UConn turns it over again. Both of these teams having players trying to make plays that are not in their arsenal. That time it was boom. 
Shaman Tools, number 30, is coming in for the first time for the Huskies. How about that ding basket here against his old Blair Academy teammate and roommate? Yeah, that was a terrific play on his part. Both of those guys with so much talent. They get Talik out of there with the two. They bring back in Rashawn Anderson, and for the first time, Tools. I am shocked that Williams is still on the floor. Touched by the Huskies. Under four, timeout. Duke has matched its largest lead of the night, seven in front, after being 11 down early. So just when I'm thinking, isn't there a car out there I could get excited about? Wham! Emeka Okafor continues to sit. He played three minutes and 55 seconds before collecting his second foul. Georgia Tech wins on a Will Bynum basket with a second and a half to go and a thriller over Oklahoma State. Uh, Jim, really a calculated move here by Mike Krzyzewski to have Williams on the floor with 3.57 to go and he's got two fouls on him. I'm really surprised he's out there with Duke in the lead. Reddick comes off the screen, plants the beat, hits the three. That's Reddick's game. Now watch this, Gordon and Duhon. This is a matchup. That basket by Reddick, his first points of the night. Villanueva, over dang this time, he answers back, take that. A little one-on-one -on -one action at Blair Academy, replay. I, I would think they've done that a few thousand times. Well, it's good to see them both step up to the challenge. There's a lot's going to be asked of them here. The remainder of this first half. Tools, a lockdown guy. is all over Reddick with that one. And Tools is talking to him a little bit, too. That's Dockery. Block. Look out. Who's this? Who's this on? It's on Sheldon Williams. Jim, I think that was Williams. a huge mistake by Duke. That's his third. and going to bring in Horvath. And you saw the Sunday night lineup with 60 minutes. The cold case. And then all kinds of uh, interesting new dramas. Not only cold case without a trace CSI Miami. It's uh, Sunday night's lineup here on CBS. Boone at the line. The one and one. Four free throw shooter. And it rattles out. But tools underneath. Horvath with the foul. Duke had an eight-point lead. You've got Williams with two fouls. You've got Okafor with two fouls. Williams stays in the game. You remember these last two fouls, Jim? Just little reaches. That's what puts a big man down. And now that really changes the complexion of the second half. And I really think Jim Calhoun is just trying to get through this first half to get there. He was behind against Duke when he came back at, at halftime to win the national championship in 99, and he's just praying that this clock will run off so he can get Okafor on that floor. Double bonus, two shots, Shaman Tools. He'll shoot one more. This team has struggled all season long, and they have not had really any tight games in the tournament, so it has not been exposed tie, in the tournament. Tie games, Jim. They've won the last six games by 23, 13, 17, 17, 20, and 16. Two bricks. They're shooting as a team 62%, and that counts the 83% that Gordon gets them. So the rest of the guys way down there. Dang jumper. Horvath knocking it out. Oh, they say it. Touch boom. It'll be Duke Ball. Denim Brown back in. To the object here with Horvath, steal minutes. Commit some fouls if you have to, but just steal some minutes. And provide some size for Duke. A lot of minutes having to be played by Boone and Villanueva in this half. Boone has gone virtually the whole way. For that, the two-year captain. Big body inside and did not see action here until the final three and a half minutes. Dang, Villanueva committed. Now he steps in, takes the two. That's what makes him so tough. He's got the outside shot, the medium range game, and obviously can finish. And they've got a 10 point lead. We've had double digit leads on each side in this half. 
Denim Brown with the three. This is huge. Yes. This is huge. Denim Brown, as we know, can be a great outside shooter. He's just been in a slump the second half of the season. That was a big shot for Connecticut. As you said, he hasn't been able to score. This is a guy who one time had 111 points in one game in high school. 111. Game up in Canada. Under two minutes to play. Dockery should have cut through and given Dang a clear out right there. I think he was ready to take going away. Duhan set up for the shot. Going away, but was there with Boom. Opportunity for a little comeback here for Connecticut to get tight. Gordon wants to get into it, and he draws the foul on the triple drive. Coming up, singular at the half with Greg and Clark and Seth. Going to analyze the first half, plus they'll be joined by Paul Hewitt right on the set. Plus the singular greatest championship game poll. And a reminder, you can still vote. That's all coming up. And singular at the half. It's the first foul on Duhon. You remember the great three-point shooter Chris Smith with the tremendous crossover dribble. He used to get on my case when I said he was palming the ball all the time. He had the all-time record of threes at Connecticut until this man on the foul line eclipsed that. Would that make UConn 7 out of 14 from the line? Duke's percentage is even worse. But that's all right. When you get Gordon on the line, Mike Krzyzewski wants a timeout. Minute 36 to go. Connecticut hanging in there. It was 10. Now 5. Cut in half by the Huskies. Thursday, the most difficult challenge in Survivor history, they tell us. We'll leave you breathless, so they say. And you will find out on Thursday, an all-new Survivor episode, Thursday at 8, 7 Central, right here on America's Most Watched Network. What will we watch here the last 136 of the half, Billy? Well, what you see is Jim Calhoun now up there willing his team on. He just wants to get the halftime, keeping it close, realizing the performance by his team is not what they're capable of. Duhan got hacked on the way up. Chris Duhan. First team all conference player. One of the great defensive players that we've seen in college basketball in recent years. Duke, of course, has had their share of what five defensive players of the year. Shane Battier being the last one multiple years. All those players like Billy King and Tommy Amaker and Wojo. Wojo on that bench now. Duhan with one more. Duhan. Last season, such a disappointment. Trying, as he said, to be too perfect. Was supposed to be, was a set preseason player of the year. Ended up third team. Look at the tip in by Horvath. Huge play there, and Jim Calhoun saying the man fouled to get in that position. Puts the lead back to eight. Brown back in and Reddick. That might be Horvath. But again, Jim, when Horvath comes into the game, unlike when Williams is in the game, you can afford to have him pick up three fouls or two fouls. It doesn't make any difference. You're just trying to steal minutes. And that is his second. Well, Okafor has been sitting since the 16.05 mark with the two fouls. And Jim, that had nothing to do with injury. That had to do with foul trouble picked up early, just being aggressive on the defensive end. You know, when he first sat, the Huskies went on an 8-1 run. But then it turned totally in Duke's favor. Brown, one of two. Duke still employing the three-guard offense with Dang being a swing man. Well, Boone got by with a foul and nobody coming to the ball. Duhon wisely calls timeout. Mike Krzyzewski angry had to give up one on that way. 55 seconds to go in the half. We'll be right back to San Antonio. 39-32 Duke and the Blue Devils 21 on the shot clock. Jim, so much hype about these two teams. I don't think either team has gotten in sync playing anywhere near their capabilities in this first half. Reddick comes right off the screen. Thought he was fouled, and Boone plucks it out of the air. He's got Denim Brown. Oh, and Dockery with.
with the theft. Oh, and a push. No calls here. Reddick pushed off. Gets the layup. Oh, there were a couple of plays by Duke that they got away with fouls, and maybe a walk on Reddick to score. Jim Calhoun livid on his side. Can almost run it down all the way. Here's where it hurts to have Talik Brown out of the game because he would be the man to set it up. Great overplays by Duhon. Gordon is so good at going down inside, coming off screens, but Duhon's right there with him. He's got 20 on the shot clock. What Gordon ought to do is reverse himself so that Duhon can't beat him out over the top of the screen. Just go back to it. Oh, a push off, no call. Going for the last shot. And they'll run it down, it looks like, as far as they can. Gordon eyeing that shot clock over the basket. Now driving in, steps up, gives it up. Boone, yes, with six seconds. Brings it to seven. Duhan with a second to go, puts up the shot, no. And actually turned the ball over and got by with a travel. Very sloppy first half by two teams that can play much better. An 18-point swing for Duke from 11 down to 7 in front. 18-point swing over the final 13 minutes of the half. Let's go over to Bonnie. Chris Collins, Okafor with the two early fouls. How were you able to take advantage of that in the post? Well, I think it gave us an early opportunity to start driving. When he's under the basket, it makes it tough with the shot blocking. Our guys started driving a little better, and we were able to put some points on the board. All right, now you've got foul trouble with your big men. Randolph's got three more important. Sheldon Williams has three. What do you envision strategy being in the second half? Well, we have to play smart. We can't get any cheap ones. A couple, a couple of those fouls were reach-ins. We've got to still be physical but play smart out there. Chris, thanks. Thank you. All right, we'll be sending it back to Greg Gumbel and the guys when we continue from San Antonio in just a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by American Express, Autotrader.com, Microsoft, and by Bud Light. 